lived experiences, the personal is political, aka anecdotal evidence. What happens when a black man tells a black fourth wave female intersectional feminist that is a Black Lives Matter activist that the vast majority of police violence or violence at all committed against black people is committed against black men? Obviously, it depends. I've seen some black feminists give fairly reasonable responses to these queries, but they still generally frame it as if black women are looking out for you, trust me, and everything is worse for us. Somehow, because reasons. Um, however, if it is somebody like Cat Black, she'll just delete the guy's comment off of her page as if it never happened, which I've seen her do. Uh, but the worst is that I've even seen some black feminists try to claim that black women have just as much, if not more, violence committed upon them, but the media just doesn't report it. Like, as if there is secretly a huge conspiracy to hide female victims of crime because it doesn't make for as juicy news or something, which any rational person knows is the exact opposite of what is true. Even mainstream media like Fox News and CNN reports more heavily on when women are killed. And things like the FBI reports back up that more men get killed or hurt by a landslide. So where are these feminists getting this nonsense from, anyway? If you know anything about third and fourth wave feminism, you'll know that one of the most common mantras is that the personal is political. And I'll concede that personal information from individuals can have political ramifications, which is why I use my personal experiences to describe my opinions on various sociopolitical topics, such as how fourth wave feminists demonize gay men and the fact that what they say basically never matches my 20 years experience of being openly homosexual in the slightest, and it, it really kind of feels like they're mostly just lying about my community. However, I do accept that my perception is anecdotal. And let me tell you, feminists will be the first to point that out if you deliver a personal experience that goes against their narrative. You see... When they say that the personal is political, what they really mean is that the personal is political when it is coming from a fourth wave intersectional feminist. It doesn't necessarily have to be a woman, nor a gay man, nor a person of color, a trans person, or a disabled person. The personal is political as long as you say the right thing. If a straight white man was once addicted to porn but now leads a feminist-oriented men's group where they basically just sit around talking about toxic masculinity the whole time, then his personal opinions are political to feminists. And no, this is not a straw man. I met the guy that was just like this. Uh, his prior porn addiction that he now credits to the patriarchy or whatever can be political. For the feminists, obviously, as it is suiting to their narrative. But really... Anybody who actually becomes addicted to porn already has to have some sort of severe psychological disorder and probably isn't the freest thinker. So you can probably get this person to say a lot of things if you offer a solution to their pitiful addiction, even if your solution was basically rooted in shaming them about their sex drive. However... Let's say a man was addicted to porn, and through the help of a psychologist, he decided that his pent-up nervousness around women was his real issue that led him to porn obsession. And it was rooted in the fear he had of violating real-life women that was instilled in him by way of, say, a feminist mother and mandatory gender studies classes. Do you think the personal would be political then? Obviously, feminists would either try to discount his perspective as either anecdotal and an exception to their rule, or even worse, they might try to smear him altogether and say he must have felt that way because he secretly desired raping women or some nonsense. Because you've never experienced accusations of the same type of insanity until you've shared your own experiences to contradict feminists. And you get to sit on the feminist petri dish while they try to make it all about you. And they will. <laughs> Still, the greater problem is not just the inconsistency of this ideology and who it favors or what type of personal opinions you are allowed to have while still having them seen as political, but more so just the behavior that it directly encourages from pseudo-intellectual or downright non-intellectual people. 
They'll go on and on about their own lived experiences as a woman to try to justify that the patriarchy theory is totally true. And then in the next comment, they'll try to tell a gay man that all homophobia against gay men is rooted in misogyny and that gay men are only ever persecuted if they are seen as feminine even if he is not particularly feminine and he has experienced a ton of homophobia in his life and knows directly that she is full of shit. This idea of the personal is political and lived experiences being important basically enables unintelligent people to think that they know fuck about shit and try to engage in conversations, always thinking they are right. And then when a person who knows more than them tries to contradict them, they get to have a get out of jail free card or something, or at least they think that they do. All of the scientific research in the world won't often sway these people because many of them think science is a tool of the patriarchy. I'm serious. And all of the data you can find from places like the FBI reports that debunk several feminist female victimization narratives, they just don't care about them. They say that they don't count because statistics are supposedly flawed, even though they cite statistics from feminists about things like campus rape that we know for sure are flawed because the people who gathered the information in that one admitted themselves it is flawed in Time magazine. But I've talked to numerous feminists who believe it because either they've been raped or they know girls who have been raped. So lived experience, counsel out, even the data that debunked this myth compiled by the people that gathered it. <laughs> Makes no sense. Uh, so as many people have already said before, it is narrative over fact with these people. But we have to stop letting them get away with this because it's, it is really out of hand. And how do we do this? Well, we keep pushing back and feeding them facts and logic that they'll probably try to ignore. But eventually, reality will hit them. So don't give up. <laughs>